What's up, guys? Welcome to the show. Tyler's Talking RC. Uh, we have a pretty decent topic uh, prepared for today. Um, but before we get into the topic, of course, quick updates. Uh, past weekend, we had the Winter Blast off road race. Uh, shout out to Caleb Jennings taking it down into a mod, TQ and a win. Uh, nicely done, buddy. And of course, everybody else that placed, that one just stuck out to me because I ended up coming down and running the races for the last couple. Um, so, yeah, shout out to him. Uh, but beside that, uh, upcoming this weekend, I believe, is uh, on road. Uh, so get your on road cars ready GT12, Formula One, sedans, TTO2s. Uh, that's this Sunday. And then, uh, then the weekend after that is Christmas. So, uh, yeah, we got one more trophy race here for the holiday. Uh, other than that, uh, that's pretty much it as far as updates in the shop. Nothing too crazy going on. So come out this weekend and, of course, Friday night racing. Yeah. Um, but so the topic today. Uh, we got uh, RC sponsorships. Now, I'm sure this is something that we've probably touched on briefly before in a number of our other shows. I think we're up to like 40 now or something like that. Um, but we're going to talk uh, just, just about RC sponsorships, what we think they mean. Uh, Tyler's even brought some literature uh, from the past here. Not, what's the date on these? Do you know? Uh, 93, 94. So early 90s, mid 90s. Um, about RC sponsorships and of course we're going to talk about in what it means today and yeah it's a whole thing that I get pretty fired up about so I'll try to keep it under control here um, <laughs> but I'll let Tyler, I, Tyler I, P go first. I, I did everything I could to bottle his rage uh, yeah so so in last week's podcast I mentioned how Lou one of the guys in the class gave me a thumb drive with all the RC car action issues I think like up to this year tons and tons of, of content and I was going through them, and I found within a couple of months, um, late 93, early 94, they had an editorial on the I have to be sponsored mentality. And then the guy who had the, the back page article um, that was basically like a little bit more colorful editorial um, did another one called I Just Gotta Get Sponsored. And I feel like that culture still is alive and well in 2022. 30 years later, I feel like I still hear that yesterday. Yep. I got to get sponsored, but why? You know what I mean? What? And, and this article kind of goes through, kind of breaking it down a little bit. It's kind of nice. It's it, still pretty relevant. It, it does. Um, and but be between the two, it kind of gives some cautionary advice. And then it, it, the uh, Chris's back lot was the name of the article in the back of the magazine. He actually gives examples of what you can do to get sponsored. Um, but it's the, his opening paragraph is kind of funny. It says, I just got to get sponsored. Shut up already. Some guy starts, this hit home because this is exactly me when I was 15 and I won like the sportsman class running oval. And immediately this is what I did. Some guy starts winning races at his local track and the next thing you know, he's phoning Trinity for free motors and batteries so that he can make the A. When he goes to the Nats next year, man, I've heard this story so many times, and and I actually did exactly that at the time. Nobody was running BSR tires, and I reached out to them, and I was like, "Hey, I won the A main in the sportsman class. Do you care?" And they were like, "All right, this guy's 15 years old. We'll give back to the hobby a little bit." And I actually got a little little ride with them for for a year or two, which was cool. But, um, yeah, it. it the two articles brought out a couple of thoughts that are really not, I don't think they're as prevalent anymore. Um, one of the points the guy made, he said, you don't have to have a sponsor to win races. I think in the brushless lipo era, you can make the argument that that is more true than ever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess to some, yeah, to some degree. I mean, I didn't race in the 90s, so I can't say for sure like you and Chris and them did, but... I can, from what I understand, batteries last 10 times longer. Yep. Motors don't have to be taken apart, cut down, maintained to some degree. Don't get me wrong. You can clean them out and stuff like that, but nothing like they did with the old brush motors, from yeah. what I understand, breaking them in. You don't break in brushless motors. You don't cut brushes on them. You don't change brushes out. You can change rotors and reshim them. There's stuff you can do, but you don't have to to make them to have a winning motor. Right, and... and Back then, there were tuner motors. That, like Putnam existed back then. He was doing Trinity-based motors. Um, Phantom existed originally doing Trinity-based motors. They tweaked Epic motors and sold them. But there were there were no five percent brushed motors. 
You you bought like they had an off the shelf motor that was twenty or twenty five bucks. That was the stock motor, and then they might have had like the good the better version with like tuned brushes or you know whatever. Yeah. But you can go and buy a top five percent motor now if you really want to spend the money, and in theory have almost the same level of equipment that a factory guy has, or pretty close, I'll say. Yeah, I just to me. I mean, good. Don't, I don't want people to taste wrong. Good electronics make a difference, but I don't think spending an extra fifty dollars on your motor is what's going to make you win your race. If you buy a hundred dollar motor, a hundred and fifty dollar motor, racing with people on your same relative level, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I totally agree. If if you're not in the A, better equipment is not going to put you in the A. No. Unless your stuff is junk. If you're racing in the top one percent of drivers. Then maybe, but right, we aren't. Well, and the funny thing was at the at the JC Nats this year, when you looked at the stock class, they were all running different equipment, different batteries, different motors. They were all about the same top top speed. Right. There was no guy that was like, "Wow, he's got that motor. Everybody should be running that motor. That should be the motor everybody buys tomorrow." It was, you know, it was pretty even, and not everybody had you know, factory handed out motors that were the best of the best. So I think that the the edge of being sponsored making you better, I don't think that's a thing anymore. No. The other thing that he points out in this article, now this is a name that the older guys will remember and the younger guys may not, Brian Kinwald. Um, he said, Brian Kinwald won against the best factory drivers in Southern California without any sponsors whatsoever. So that's if, and there are people out, out there today you know, you watch some of these young kids come in, they pick up a controller, I'm um, Caputo, right? Like, he's he's when he's on, he's really good. And he's not doing it with, like, super top-secret prototype equipment. Um, he goes on to say, he goes, he did this, Kenwald, by logging hours and hours of practice and getting to know what his car does and how to make it work different on different tracks. Weird. It's almost as if practice and effort and learning is more valuable than equipment. You're telling me if I practice in my car instead of spending an extra 50 bucks on a motor that it'll make more of a difference? Weird. Seemed to work for Kenwald. But it's not even it's not even the equipment that bothers me so much as having the best equipment is fine. It's the sponsorship of... I, not so much... Just getting a deal on parts from a manufacturer. It, being sponsored to me is more of not, oh, I just pay 40% less for the same parts that you can buy over there on the shelf. Being <laughs> sponsored to me is you are being, I think it says it right somewhere in there, being an ambassador for the brand. Yes. Promote the brand. Not just win with the brand, promote with the brand. That's where my problem lies. And that's what I see a lot of people missing. I think a lot of people today, they see the opportunity to get sponsored as... Yay for me, boo for anybody else. Yeah. So I get a deal on parts. Right. So let's think about that. So you're going to save money on parts. Okay, no problem, whatever. Maybe, I mean, th this is the other thing, is just because you're sponsored doesn't mean you have a full factory ride. There's you might have as little as 10 to 20% discount, which at that point, if Chris really likes you, <laughs> you may be paying similar prices here at the shop. And that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. So. Yeah, sorry. No, no, that's that, that's the part that gets me fired up is because I work for the shop, obviously, right. and then the people that are getting sponsored parts really, really grinds my gears when they're selling them out there when we're having a race. Yeah, and that's that's a whole that's I'm not a whole other thing. Name names or anything, but that drives me nuts because we're here to sell things, and we have the tracks, and then if yep. people are just getting sponsored and selling their products. If it's something I don't have, I usually don't say much about it because, hey, I didn't have it to sell and you did, so what do you want me to do about it? Right, but you don't... You sh Sponsorship is not to let... It's not it's, for you to sell things to make it's, money on. It's not a multi-level marketing scheme. That's where, where, where it's like, I'm sponsored, so now I, ha I, am, I am my own boss. I've started my own business selling stuff out of the back of my <laughs> truck. You should be just giving them the parts. Well, that's the thing is if... So... To your point about being an ambassador, in this art in, in the article in Chris's back lot, it says, show that you are capable of representing a company in a professional manner. Okay? Professional manner probably doesn't mean hawking parts in the back parking lot. 
I would right? agree. Trying to pad your wallet. It also doesn't mean, so here's the next part, be, well, it does mean, be courteous to other drivers and help them when you can. So instead of selling that part, maybe you're giving someone that part. Or that, letting them try it so or, they can go buy one or it, something like that. Exactly. It says, be the first to volunteer for turn marshaling duties or track maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and never, so I cannot overemphasize this because there's way too much of this right now. Never, ever lose your cool in the driver's stand. And I don't mean like, oh, I broke. I'm going to walk off the driver's stand, which is technically bad etiquette, but like whatever, as long as you don't do it in a disruptive fashion. But it means not intentionally trying to wreck people. It means not getting into arguments, making a scene, yada, yada, yada. Which gives the brand that you're sponsored by a bad name. Which I don't understand because you would think that like, this is not a big community. Bad gas travels fast in a small town. Yeah. And there, there, I've seen enough shenanigans with people who are sponsored that, like, I don't understand how they're still on the teams that they're on sometimes. Because they're sponsored on the level that they're just, the company's just making money off of them. Well, so that brings there's us to another point. There's a few different levels of sponsorship, and there's a few that, that drive me nuts. Right. So if you're traveling to do to, to big races... And, you know, it's partially on your dime, partially on the company's dime, you know, and you are an ambassador, you're, and here's like, this is kind of the, the flip side of it. You're kind of turning your hobby into a job, which can be a double-edged sword. If you're traveling and you're doing stuff like that and you're representing the brand, you deserve to be sponsored because you're putting in effort. But I think it's, but if, I think it's more just the word sponsorship that's getting uh, different definitions. So and that one you just gave is... A sponsorship. That's a sponsored driver. I think a lot of what you see at the local level is what do we call them? Contract customers. <laughs> yes, it's there's a difference between being sponsored and getting a discount, in right. my opinion. So, yep. if you just did, I mean, if you're just picking up uh, different brands every week and then saying you're sponsored by them just so you can try their stuff at a little bit discount, find out you don't like it, switch to another company, get sponsored by them, don't like right. it, switch to another company. I, what is that? That is just, you're just hunting for discounts. Which I can't blame you for, I guess, really, but I, don't call yourself sponsored. Yeah, I guess there's a caveat that if if you have a hard time, you know, affording the hobby and, and you're a good enough driver and you get the discount and you represent them in a positive way, good for you, right? There's nothing wrong with, with making the hobby more accessible. I think in a lot of cases, like you said, it's, you're getting a discount. They're cutting the hobby shop out of the loop. Right. And they're selling, you know, it turns into like a, a Walmart or a Sam's Club for RC where it's like, yeah, well, just you order all your stuff direct from us and we don't have to go through the hobby shop and, and they don't make any money. And, and ultimately, if the hobby shop dries up, then your your sponsorship is worth. Well, that's what I'm saying. And then it gets to the point sometimes where they, well, a company is selling all of their products to they're sponsored people and then us as a hobby shop we're like well we want to buy some oh we don't have any left we give them all out to the team drivers so then so, why are you in business so what what are we doing here right do you want us to sell your product or you just want to give it away to everybody and then let them race it on our tracks right this doesn't it, make sense to me and that's like for a while i you know maybe 10 10 5 to 10 years ago i i had a huge hatred for like hobby king and, and and like a lot of these i'll call them non-support companies like they don't hold race races they don't have a brick and mortar store they sell stuff the people will come to a track and use the track they'll use the facilities and it, it's it, it doesn't add anything to the hobby yeah that's what, I, I think that's if you don't have the hobby shop there is no hobby and so some sponsorships do actually add to the hobby. There's good people that are sponsored. But the thing that, in my opinion, when you're sponsored, you're helping with either research and development on maybe a product. Yeah. You're reporting back to somebody, giving input. And meanwhile, you're helping out everybody else that owns said car. I'm just going to use a brand. I'm not partial. Any, I just I run associated cars. So yep. if, you're, if, I'm, if I'm running an associated buggy that they gave me, I'll just say they gave it to me. I have an associated buggy. I like them. I run it. Um, now I could just win with it all the time, not talk to anybody 
people would see it and no, oh, that's cool. But if I'm just just mean to everybody, don't help anybody, and I win with the car all the time, and I continue to be sponsored, to me that's not right. I would rather oh, sure. I would rather have somebody in the B main that is a social butterfly and just wants to talk to everybody yeah. about associated car, or just willing to help them, and but maybe they're not the best driver. Fine, whatever. But like uh, I always go back to. Uh, Matt Olson, I think he was working for MIP, but we'll say he was sponsored by MIP. When he came to the JC Nets quite a few years ago, he actually came in, reorganized our MRP wall. I remember that. Filled the wall out, let us know what we were missing, and then just told us to reorder from him when the wall ran out. And he did a great job. He came in when we were closed and redid the whole thing. To me, that's amazing. That was the most at any. RC sponsor had now I think he worked for him so it was maybe a little bit but still but, but it's the same it's the same idea of you want to show up you want to represent the brand well I don't even and know you want, how and he you want that and day. you want to add value I don't even know how well he did on the racetrack right day. but you remember how he acted but I remember he was a great guy helped everybody replace some parts that people had around the track yep. some dog bones and stuff a couple tools he replaced I had broke some tools he replaced those filled out our wall and it just I can't talk good enough about MIP ever since right and what's going to happen is when you need another wrench when you need whatever but stuff like it's, that it just goes way further than just yes being being a dick all the time and just winning races to me that doesn't do anything for me personally right so i i look at a like a good example to me is somebody like tom bishop right? tom bishop was always tom to help tom runs losi losi is not as prevalent at this you know at madness but if if you know i remember when matt pine was kind of new Tom and Andrew were always really helpful ha helping oh, Matt. Yeah, all the time. When uh, one, one of the guys that did the clinic um, had a low C50, like Andrew spent a fair amount of time with him. Granted, it was the clinic, but like Andrew kind of singled him out because it's like, all right, you've got a low C, let me help you, let me get you up to speed. That's what you want to do. I've seen Tom out there gluing J-Concept tires <laughs> for people. Yep. And not J-Concept, just helping them glue tire, but he's sponsored by JC. <laughs> I tell, I've seen him tell people to go buy certain tires of the shop. I've seen him in the shop selling people tires or selling them TLR cars that are ours, not his. He's selling yeah, our selling product. Selling them on. He comes behind our counter. And if, yeah. I'm sure the majority of people know that are watching. And it's stuff like that. I'm not saying I want everybody behind the counter selling our stuff. But he's not selling it out the back of his trailer like, hey, I got a bunch of you know, 22s got some over O's. here. You know? No. He's like, oh, you got them in the shop. Go get them. Or he'll tell Chris, hey, order a couple of these. Somebody, a couple guys said they wanted them. Right. But he's done more for TLR than him and Andrew than most pretty much everybody I know. Aside right. from the Kaufmans, the Kaufmans are pretty good too. But I think that I think he's the team leader at this point. Right. The Kaufmans and the Bishops they do great for the TLR brand. That to me is being sponsored. Yep. But they are going to like every race. They're always helping people. They always help me with the track dirt season. But yeah. Tom so was that's out there. the Kaufmans were out there. That's another big thing is. Tom is always helping me with stuff around here. Help out at the shop. Andrew helped out with the clinic yep. and used this TLR car to do a demonstration on. To yep. me, that is being sponsored. That I agree with. I fully support that. Right. But the random kid that just picked up whatever, Tekken, and is like, oh, I'm sponsored by Tekken now and running whatever their and, electronics. And, and, and proceeds to get the smack laid down on him in the B main by every, and, all the locals. <laughs> and there's a Facebook post about it or something stupid. Oh, I'm sponsored by Tekken. I got $15 off this motor. Now I can only run their equipment. Right. And then now it's like, that, really, that's, dog? That's the other thing. That, and this is turning into a bit of a that what grinds my gears episode. But it, it, but it does grind my gears. So it really frustrates me when I see, like, I will never buy a product because somebody went on Facebook and was like, had a great day today thanks to my insert brand blah blah and my insert brand tires. It's like, I don't care. No, like, I don't think show up and, and run the stuff and be, it's again, like a Facebook post isn't going to, isn't going to convert people. It's, it's how you behave. It's, it's how the stuff performs and you've got to have, you've got to, you've got to have the whole package. You, if, if if you make their product look bad, you're not bring you're not doing what they need you to do, okay. and if you don't as an individual look good, then people aren't going to want to have anything to do with you or be associated right. with that brand. Like you catch second place, you come off the stand, you're throwing stuff, you're swearing, or you're yelling people at the stand. I saw this the J Concept Nationals. I saw it not in 
any big race of that you get people yelling at each other on the stand and yep. they're all sponsored drivers are all in the sponsored class and they're all yelling at each other up there and carrying on and i'm like yep. guys this is not what we do and then i like this little circle that you got there on that one That's yeah I so read. i read that so there were a couple there there's a couple paragraphs that stood uh, out here who's that? so we'll talk about for those i mean if anybody is listening that that is that's thinking about getting sponsored there are ways that you can go about it we'll get there but under the subheading, it says, how do I get sponsored? Why do people want to be sponsored anyway? Racing is supposed to be a hobby. No. Okay. But when you're sponsored, and this is what we've been tiptoeing around, you are expected to come through with the goods. Win or walk. How much fun is that? Now, granted, we live in an era of, particip of participation trophies. Everybody's and aware. there's a lot of, I've seen a lot of companies out there that they're willing to, to you know, it's very low pressure sponsorship. They don't expect much of you. Well, if they don't expect much of you, then are they really, what What are, what are you getting then? A discount. Right. If, <laughs> if they're just willing to, you know, give you a discount and, and not get much back, then it kind of, to me, it diminishes the value of being sponsored anyway. But yeah, this last paragraph says, life is too full of stress as it is. That was true 30 years ago. It's even more true now. Why turn your hobby into another source of pressure? So, you know, and that's what I see. I see people that instead of coming here and hanging out with their friends, looking at it as a learning opportunity. How do I, you know, learn how to tune the car, learn yeah. more about electronics. It's... I didn't win, and, and I get it. Like, winning is fun. Having a good car is fun. It's frustrating when those things aren't there. I get it, because I've been there, and that's when I... You don't see me for a couple of weeks. I'll take a knee. But if if you're coming here, and you're, and, and you're not having fun, and you're getting frustrated and doing all those things, you know, wrecking your car at the end of the straight, yelling at people, making a... You know, making what's, a... What's the point? A fuss. Don't do it. Yeah, just go to work. You're better off. Well, yeah, you might as well go. You might as well go to work. But if if the sponsorship is adding a level of stress to something that's supposed to be fun, you know, either get paid good money and be miserable, or go do something for fun and and, and do it for free. <laughs> you know. I just I just don't think aside from the top one percent of people in the RC industry that are sponsored are actually getting paid. They're just getting discounts. Right. And there's probably, I don't even know, maybe 20 or 30 actual RC drivers that are getting paid. Yep. And even then, I don't think it's a life-changing amount of money. No. In fact, I, I remember a few, like, years, I don't know, five five years ago or so ago, hearing what the average salary was for, you know, like a Tebow-type character, you know. They're not making crazy money. Most of the top, you know, top guys, from what I understand, like... Tebow, Adam Drake, or I really don't know a lot of names, but a lot of those actually have positions within the company that are yes, that are engineers that are actually working on the car. It's they they're have, paid to be engineers in a more than role. they're paid to be drivers. Yes, and they went to school for it. Now this isn't everybody. This is mostly just what I've heard. But like, look at Adam Drake. He's made quite a good living at it but he didn't yep. do it just from driving he started right. little companies he's did he's got his own little brand the flashpoint stuff he's got a deal with mugen website like he grew it into a business which is fine but just That's, on a grand scheme of things it's hard to do your 15 year old kid down here on a tuesday night is not making any money being sponsored right they're losing money right <laughs> So, you know, I, it, at the end of the day, and I'm kind of just skimming this to see if there was anything else. What price glory? I feel like we forgot a word in that one. Yeah. What's the what's price, the of, price glory? of glory? So, what price glory? Yeah. It's like a Chinese translation on the title there. But, yeah, I mean, again, this, this editorial, the other thing I printed out, ask yourself this. Are you involved with RC because you want to relax and have fun or because you only want to win? You know, so it, it gets back to that. And, you know, I mean, come I, here and have fun. I understand winning. I mean, we all kind of want to win. Nobody enters a race saying, yeah, I'd like to just really lose this race right now. But there's a, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Winning, it shouldn't be all about winning. Yeah. There, it well, should be, in my opinion, it should be 10% about winning and 90% having fun hanging out and not worrying about stuff because it's a leisurely hobby. Yep. 
It's like if you wouldn't play golf and all it did is golf just piss you off the whole entire time you just played golf. You probably shouldn't be playing golf. Why are you playing golf, dog? <laughs> well, and, 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 and this is what I was getting at earlier. And I think it's a part of the hobby that people miss because they think that it's all about the driving and the racing and the going fast. And if you're not the fast person, then how could you be having fun? You have to find meaning in the hobby beyond that, right? So to me, I get a ton of enjoyment out of test and tune. Right. Play with the play with car setup, read books, you know, and and, and experiment and figure out what does what on a car. Mechanic wise, it, mechanically wise. Right. This is like uh, relates to our couple episodes ago with mechanical skills and and how it translates to real life. Yeah. Right. And you like the side. I I think I'm in the same boat as you as far as just building cars and oh yeah you know i'm always just building custom cars and this and that but racing is probably only like 10 percent of the hobby for me like i said before right and the, you really gotta f not take joy in just winning that is the only source of joy because you'll be miserable all the time you just can't win all the time right it's not it's, it's not feasible even the top drivers in the world don't win all the time right and you know and then there's the social aspect of being here where if you have a good group of friends, if you've kind of invested in, you know, the club atmosphere and the people that are here, you can have a crummy, like I, okay. So for example, I think of Scott, Jay, Manny, Mike Coombs, Josh, Jeremy, the guys that we all sit on the hobby shop side of the, the pits. I can have a crummy night but watch one of them have a burner of a run and maybe win their main. And it's like, that was awesome. I'm glad I was here for that. Yeah, you're like, right. You can find satisfaction in, in rooting for your friends and for you know being there for other people. And again, it gets back to, are you here for what you can get out of it? Or are you kind of here for that? And are you also looking to give back? I think it's it's maybe it's a maturity thing, maybe it's a perspective thing. Now that I'm an old fart. <laughs> no, I think you're right. I think a lot of people in, that have really competitive just take too much equity in winning. I think they just need to step back and just enjoy driving the car. Yep. I think I think a lot of those people find themselves really just enjoying themselves, practicing with their friends. From what I see, for the most part. Yeah. Like uh, like me and Johnny were over here the other day, just two of us driving our Formula One car to see who could get hot the better lap. hot lap. We were having a ball back there. Yep. We weren't racing each other, and there was only two of us here, and we were all just standing there. Tyler P. was here. I think Justin maybe or no, I don't remember. But we were, me and Jim were just going to see who could get the yep. fastest lap. Joking pra around, practicing talk, on talking a Wednesday smack. night. Like, it was, it was, it was really fun, and we weren't even really racing. And I think a lot of people need to step back and figure out what they enjoy about the hobby yep and not just focus on the winning yep and i know it's not everybody that focused on winning it's probably a smaller percentage that do than don't to be honest with you yeah but the few that do I don't know. you'll enjoy your time here more yeah i mean look at like so the last couple saturdays i brought the short course truck out so randy comes down throws his truck down and absolutely demolishes me cool now i have more research to do to make my truck better fun you know, that's what I'm saying. It's you just, just you find things that that and it kind of make you happy. It rolls back into the sponsorship thing. If I just think if you're taking racing so seriously and you're not happy or winning in this, is this sponsor, getting sponsored and putting the extra pressure on yourself going to make you have more fun? As the article is saying, nope. No. Now, if you're already that tight, high, strung about winning all the time, putting extra pressure from a company yeah, is not going to help anything. But so. There were a couple bullet points of what you should. So look at look at this as like qualifications, right? Do you have a professional looking RC resume? If you can't fill a page with what you've done in the hobby, you're probably not ready to be sponsored. You probably haven't done enough I've to never be even sponsored. Made one. <laughs> the other thing that it points out. So we talked about being an ambassador, being a positive influence at the track, and then the last one was win a big race, and not like not Tuesday night with four people here. Yeah, not Tuesday night with four people here. Maybe a point series, like one of the winter series, if you can demonstrate you know, that you're really good over a period of time. Do that in a few different classes or a few different times. That's cool. You know, Win a class at the JC race. Win you know, barbecue blast, JC race, the Schumacher race if it's big enough. But not just 
you know, I, I, I win the B every Friday night, you know, in the whatever. Think, like, you have to have done something. I agree with that, and I also agree with, I think, the companies need to make it harder to become sponsored, too. Yeah, that's a whole nother. Because, in all honesty, I could fake an RC resume. It's really wouldn't yeah. Be how that are they going to vet it out? That's what I'm saying. They need a way to check in on this, and I mean, the easiest thing would do be, for example, be like me or Chris. You know what I mean? Call one of us. And yeah, it's, it's happened in the past, believe it or not, with some companies, and we've said oh, I believe we've it. said A or nay. <laughs> but uh, no, <laughs> I'm not going to go into that much more. But anyway, for more companies like it was much more. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But I'm just saying, like, we'll say much more example, because I don't really have any dealings with much more. But so you send in a resume to much more. I won whatever yeah, national X, race. X, Y, Z. And then, okay, here's 30% off deal. Yeah. They don't know you. They don't know that you actually won that race. What are they, are they checking? Right. Like, I'm Did not they, saying that's what much more does. I, I mean, you, have with, no idea about you could with Live RC now. You could be like, all right, here's the link showing how many people were in the class, blah, blah, blah. But You could, but they don't know those people either. Well, yeah. It, yeah. it could have been a, a weird night where you were the fastest driver here and the top bottom ten people all just got in the hobby at the same time and you won by two laps and you're like... Tyler, <laughs> winning is winning. <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I know. You're right. The companies need to make it harder to become sponsored. Yep. Because when they do make it harder to become sponsored... It actually gives the sponsorship more credentials. It it's more valuable. Right. It means something. Right. Whereas right now it's like if Team meh. Associated, I send in a resume, the whole thing. They called up Chris. Does this guy actually do this? Blah blah blah. blah. Chris right. says, "Oh yeah, he does this and this." Then they're like, "Okay." Then they call me. Then we talk. Like, like we're getting a job. So that you, you don't just send an email to your company and then they just say, "All right, show up Monday." Right. You know what I mean? Here's the W two. Fill it out. That's what I'm saying. Like, so, so that was what happened. So after the JC race, there was a company, a, not a, not a local motor company. It was a company from way far away from here, that I reached out to because I had a technical question. I was going to try one of their motors, and I was like, "Hey, I meant to order the torque rotor. What's the part number so I can order it?" And it turned into, "Well, what are you running? Where are you from? Blah blah blah." And the next thing I know. The team manager emails me and he's like, I want to talk. Can can you give me a call? We spent an hour and a half on the phone. The dude was really cool, very nice. And at the end of the conversation, he was like, you know, it was very much like an interview. And he was like, and th this was this year. He was like, well, you know, we'd, we'd like to have you on the team. Cool. What's it like? What does it do for me? And he was like, "Well, you know, we could it'd probably be 20 30 percent discount." And I'm like, "Okay, probably off MSRP, right? Which That's is not street price." We can circle back to that one. Okay. <laughs> and I said, "All right." I said, "But now you guys sell motors, ESCs, and batteries, so is the expectation that I would run all of your equipment?" And he and this is important to keep in mind. He goes, "Yes, you would have to run all our electronics." And that was the part the part where I was kind of I, I wasn't super sold because I it was one of these kinds of deals. But once he said that, it was like my, my reply very politely was I can't afford to be sponsored by you. I have That's a so bunch of motors, happen, yeah. a bunch of motors. I have a bunch of ESCs and I have a bunch of packs that I'm not going to sell at a loss to go buy new equipment just to say I'm sponsored. That similar situation came up uh, this week. Um, again, keeping names out of it, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come around to that MSRP thing. So when companies pricing, they have a MSRP, a street price, and then they have a cost generally when like we're a store. So MSRP is I really don't understand the point of it. Some kind of sick joke, I think, at this point. <laughs> but there's a street price or a map manufacturer set price, map price that if they have a map price technically you're not supposed to sell it below that price or advertise it then there's like street price which if the company has a set of price it's kind of you know kind of what it's selling what are you for, really you know gonna pay I mean? for it it's a you know everybody's kind of selling this motor for 50 bucks or whatever you know what i mean so msrp is usually let's say it's a hundred dollars map price will be 75 dollars right and then cost will be 
you know, whatever. 30 or 40. We'll call it 40 bucks for said motor. And obviously, these are not real prices. But when, when, when Tyler said you get a 30% discount, that's 30% discount off $100, not 30% discount off the $75. Right. So, really, it's a... It's a $70 motor. You just got saved $5 off street price. Obviously, it's just a made-up example, but that's really how it works. And that was when I when I had the sponsorship when I ran Oval. It was a little better than that. It oh, was better. obviously more percentage. It was better than I could have done at the hobby shop, which I didn't appreciate the value of supporting the hobby shop. I was too young. But it was not a screaming deal. It was all off MSRP. So if the Oval car was... Six hundred dollars. By the time you applied the discount, I was I, I remember thinking, you know, young me, like, that's how much they list them for in the magazines. And that's something you got to keep in mind too when you're sponsored, um, because the situation came up uh, this week where uh, Company A uh, let you run whatever electronics you wanted. We're just talking the chassis. Company A had the chassis. Run whatever you want. You just got to run the chassis. Okay, to get a discount on that, no big deal. Now Company A has gone back to them and said, well, we also want you to run all of our electronics too. So now you have to run Company A's car and all their electronics. Problem is you have five cars from Company A and now they all want to be outfitted with servo motor, ESC, battery, and speed control. And you're going to go spend f- and now $2,000. You have, to, now you have to outfit five cars to be sponsored. with a 50% off deal off MSRP. So MSRP on a two hundred dollar speed control is probably two hundred and fifty, sixty dollars, and now you have to outload five cars in order to remain sponsored and spend, yeah, the type of a few thousand dollars outfitting these cars by a company that you're sponsored by. Right. And you tell me who's making money. And and that's what I that's why I make the joke about multi level marketing, right? Like Mary Kay, Young Living. There's these. These, they're typically like the Facebook advertisements of like the be your own boss, have your home company, you know, out of your garage. And all they really want to do is you pay for the starter kit and then you go and sign up other people to buy starter kits. And then they, it's, it's not a pyramid scheme. It's just in the shape of one. And eventually they give you a pink Cadillac. It's right. (laughs) So uh, it's, it's kind of hauntingly similar. Um, My advice, let nobody own you. Run the tires you want. Run the motors you want. Run, do your own thing. That's essentially... Unless, unless it's some super sweet deal and you're an all-star, and then you don't need to listen to Tyler P. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're real good and you can make it work, don't get me wrong. Ooh, somebody hitting the wall out there, don't mind. There's, there's no wall ride anymore. <laughs> no. Um, the sponsorships, just at the end of the day, just support what you like. Yep. Um, and if you're going to go get sponsored... Be an ambassador for the brand. Be sponsored by them because you want to run their stuff. Because you like it. Because you like it. Yep. You want to help people with it. You support whatever their company cause is, not just because they said, we'll give you a t-shirt and 40% off. Oh, all right, I'll switch everything I there, want for that. There's a term that, that um, for people that sell their, their, their beliefs and morals for money. I forget what the term for that kind of individual is. It's a specific it's profession. Selling out. It's the old, oh, not what I was thinking of. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> don't be one of those either. I'm trying to keep the uh, the content PG. Um, Lawyer. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, but become sponsored by somebody because you really like it. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, just I don't know. You got to believe in those protein shakes if you're going to sell them. Personally, in the massive jobs. I don't think there should be any sponsorships other than people that work for whatever company. Like, yeah. for I work for RC Madness, so I run RC Madness, New Wave Batteries, New Wave Motors, but I work here. I thought you believed in the product. I do believe in them. We have them manufactured. I really do actually believe in them. Otherwise, I would just say they're crap, and then I wouldn't get them again. Well, that's what's going in my mod car. We- I, I, it's the only reason, I mean, I do run for them because I work, I, but I work for the company. That's yeah. like if you worked for Team Associated and you run Team Associated cars. You probably wouldn't run low cars. That's fine. Yeah. But don't just change gears all around all the time because you're sponsored and you want to get sponsored by the next company every year. That's not doing anything for the hobby. To paraphrase Dwight K. Schrute, I believe what I'm being paid for here is my loyalty. <laughs> so I'll go wherever they value loyalty the most. Pretty much. Now are we gonna talk about trophies? Oh. Just kidding. 
Let's <laughs> not. Don't even get me started about trophies. Can see the storm cloud over his head. Nah, but I do like this uh, paper that you brought in. I don't know for anybody that wants to actually read the whole thing. I'm maybe you can probably find it on Google out there somewhere. That's the. Uh, I don't know if you can see that back back lot. Chris's back lot in the back of radio controlled car action. And the camera quality might be good enough if you want to pause it there and read it. I don't know, but it's pretty good. Tyler's pretty interesting. Tyler P's got a bunch of these on that flash drive, so we've been looking. He's yeah. been looking through them. Um, but yeah, sponsorships in a nutshell. Enjoy the hobby for what it is. It's a leisure activity playing with toy cars. Don't make it more than that, or you're gonna end up hating the hobby and not having any fun. And who does that support? And then if you do want to get sponsored, do it because you like the brand, because you want to run their things and because it's working for you already. Don't just go get sponsored by some random company that you've never used any of their stuff before just because they're gonna give you a deal. Because guess what? You're just a, con a customer, contract customer. That's all it comes down to. Boom. You're, they're just selling you stuff. If you're just buying it because there's a deal on it and you don't like it, you know what I mean? Would you have bought it otherwise? Ask yourself that. Yep. So. That's how I feel about sponsorships. <laughs> um, but anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let us know if you got any topics you want us to talk about. Uh, if, uh, if we don't see you next week, I, I'm planning on it. But if not, uh, happy holidays, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.